Welcome to the 30 minute acrylic portrait where we paint an acrylic portrait in about a half an hour. Uh, today we're working on a portrait of a pensive looking man um, with a blue gray shirt. And as you can see, he's got a furrowed brow. Uh, he's got uh, vertical forehead furrows, horizontal forehead furrows. Um, nice strong shading here that's really going to give us an excellent sense of contrast and I think this is going to make a fantastic portrait. Um, this image here is from Living Waters Ministry supplied uh, generously by Ray Comfort so check out his ministry there. Um, but anyway that's what I'm going to be working on today. Um, try this out. It's a nice exercise that you can do just to you know, kind of loosen up and uh, just see what's possible with acrylic without committing to a painting with a ton of detail and time invested. Uh, this actually can help you to get faster at your uh, paintings where you might take longer and do the glazing technique and build up a lot of richness and depth. Here though we're going to do this all a prima, 30 minutes and dive right in see what happens. So I'm going to ask a blessing here and we'll begin. Uh, Father, I ask a blessing on this painting. Uh, help me to be able to paint this portrait with excellence, uh, to be able to capture his likeness as quick as I can in 30 minutes. Bless the people watching, and I pray this would be an encouragement to them. Uh, I pray that it would inspire them to be able to do some 30-minute acrylic portraits as well. And, uh, yeah, just bless this time that we can have fun as we paint. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, of course we had a little uh, phone call there. It tends to happen while I do a recording. That's okay. I uh, just want to show you the brushes we're going to use for this painting. Um, I have an assortment of rounds and flats and the sizes that you will use for your painting uh, will be determined by the size of your canvas. Um, I have a 8 by 10 canvas board here and so my brushes obviously are not quite as large as I would maybe use for a four by six foot painting, for example. This is not going to work for that. Um, so, I also have my usual uh, setup here of colors. I've got uh, raw umber dark, burnt sienna, raw sienna. Uh, I have ultramarine blue and phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, um, naphthal red, pyrrole orange, Indian yellow, and titanium white. Of course, a little bit of matte medium as well, but we will be mostly painting this opaque. So it's not gonna be a huge thing. All right, so I have my, uh, my uh, timer set up here so you can make sure that I'm actually doing this within 30 minutes. It is uh, completely a la prima. So I'm gonna set it up for 30 minutes here. And when that uh, stops ticking, I'm going to put down my brush, give or take a second or two, um, and let's let's begin. So the first step here is to basically dive in and just capture um, the overall uh, format here. We want to get the uh, form of the subject in and just kind of block in uh, the arrangement, the composition, the anatomy, and so on. So. Uh, to do that, I'm going to take a small round brush and I'm going to take some raw umber dark and mix it with matte medium so it's a little bit translucent. And I just find that this color works really well for blocking in a lot of different things, especially the composition. And the matte medium just makes it a little bit lighter so that if I make some mistakes, which I usually do make some mistakes, <laughs> I can uh, kind of compensate for those. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just um, begin here on the left hand side. Just kind of want to get a sense for the composition. I'll actually pull it out to the uh, wide angle shot so you can see what's going on better. Okay. So yeah, we'll leave a little space in the top. We won't have his head touch the top. Sometimes we do in these paintings. But in this case I'm just going to you know, more or less try to capture the angle here. And, uh, you know, he's got kind of an oval face, so we want to account for that in the reference photo. And those angles are important. We don't want to have him vertically arranged when he's actually got his head kind of tilted to one side. Uh, because in these, um, in these uh, 
videos here, I, and I actually take this image from uh, a video uh, it's where Ray Comfort is talking with these people and he's sharing Jesus with them. And he gets into some really interesting conversations and this guy's thinking and that's why you know his head is tilted to one side and he's kind of got the furrowed brow. Now I'm going to put in the shoulder here and uh, it doesn't have to be a perfect rendition of what we have. I have to keep in mind I only have 30 minutes so I do have to work fairly quickly. And I'll just kind of position his ears and then uh, after that we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in uh, some of his facial features uh, like his eyes and so on and so forth. So um, that's going to be an important consideration. So let's do that and we'll just go ahead and kind of line up where his eyes are at. They're above the center point. They're a little above the ears. So just quickly kind of suggest them in there. Uh, eyebrows and then kind of plot out where the nose is going to be quickly, uh, the mouth, and then we have uh, his kind of his goatee there and uh, we'll just get that in, nasolabial folds, okay something about like that is what we're going to do. All right and then he's got his his neck there and with the opening for his shirt so you want to show that as well, that's going to be important. All right. And now that we have that blocked in like that and it's pretty good, let's go ahead. Yeah, we'll just make sure we got that jawline where it should be. Now let's just go ahead and start getting in some of the uh, um, darker values here. I have to decide whether I want to block in the lighter values or darker values. I think I'm going to block in some of the lighter values at this point because the shadows don't comprise a large part of the face. Uh, so I'm going to take this flat brush here um, and we're going to start mixing a skin tone that can work for that. We'll begin with titanium white. Uh, we'll add a little bit of Indian yellow and raw sienna to warm it up. And just a bit of pyro orange. It's a nice red orange color, and that works really, really well uh, for getting those warmer tints. Just move this camera up so you can see that color a little better. There we go. Yeah, so this should work pretty well for blocking in. Let's just add a little bit more raw sienna and then just a bit of burnt sienna too. I find that can work really well as a nice skin tone. Got to get something that's got a decent amount of darkness to it. Now we're going to go ahead and block that in. Uh, we'll begin with the lighter areas in the middle. And I'm just looking at it, say, let's, let's actually add a little more red to it. Uh, let's add just a bit of naphthal red. And that's this color over here uh, next to our raw umber dark. Got naphthal red right there. We'll just kind of warm it up a little bit. All right, I think that might be a little better. We'll just quick blend it into what's on there. As long as you keep the paint wet, um, then it's very workable. All right, and you, then you smooth it out. Now we will just kind of apply it in the main part of his face and we'll probably just kind of have to fill everything in um, in interest of time here. I will leave some spaces open for the darker values at this point. I'll just kind of block it in around. Okay, we get the nose in. And we'll go ahead and paint on the other side. All right. I'm leaving a little room for some of the shadows that are going to go in and I have to do that because this is wet on wet and if I just paint everything and lose all of my uh, compositional lines and anatomical lines it's going to be that much harder. Plus the paint is going to end up mixing. The darker values will mix with the light and it'll just get muddy. So I have to kind of leave this open space for it allowing this ground uh, this this blue gray ground to stand out from that. And we do have the lips here. I'm just going to block in a little suggestion of a highlight 
and then a bit of the value showing the chin and we have that shadow under uh, the lip and that's important to capture there now we'll just kind of blend that out right there on the edges and this is already starting to set up so I'm gonna have to let that be uh, and now let's see we can get a little bit of the ear color and let's actually pull uh, from this redder part of the mix up here and I've got something a little more yellowish and then a something a little more red up on top and that gives me a little bit of leeway where I, I can pull from a different color if I need to. And let's just kind of block in some of the structure of the ear. Um, we'll get the other side in there as well. All right, that's good. Yeah, and now, now let's go ahead and put in some shadows. So for that, I'm gonna take uh, my round brush and we're gonna take some raw umber dark and just kind of mix this over to the side of the other flesh tone uh, with a little bit of titanium white just to lighten that up. Some raw sienna, alizarin crimson just so it doesn't get too yellowish. Uh, maybe a bit of burnt sienna. And then we'll mix this into the other flesh tones as well. Uh, we don't want it to get too dark right away. Maybe just add a little more red. Try some naphthal red to that. Okay, that should be good. So this is quite dark up here. Uh, this whole section here with his eyes and everything, quite dark. And we're just going to get something kind of intermediate here. Uh, we, we can block in the shadows of his uh, skull sockets. And that's what we really want to do. More than just seeing the shape of eyes and everything, we want to see the shape that the value creates. And that's where you get the realism. So you're noticing the um, lighting, the sun lighting from on top and it's shining right on his forehead and that's what we're really trying to pay attention to is the direction of the lighting structure. Now we're going to get a shadow under his chin, or sorry, <laughs> under his nose. Yeah, I know my anatomical parts. Under the nose and then we're going to work over to the, um, we're going to work over to his mouth and get some shadows in there. All right, so we've got these two little kind of shadows on the left and right side of the mouth. We've got a strong shadow under the lip to capture that in. Uh, I'm going to just use this color for the beard. I'm not so concerned about it being the exact color. At this point, I just really want to get the value structure locked in as much as I can. Okay, so we're 10 minutes down already. we got some good ground covered. And if, as long as we can get the major tonal value structure, that's what matters the most. Now let's go ahead and switch over to this flat brush here. And I'm going to block in some of the shadow shapes. Now we have the darkest values. Um, now we have to have the second darkest values. So we, we blocked in the, the brightest highlights, the darkest darks, more or less. Now we're going for an intermediary kind of mid-tone. Uh, so we're going to add some titanium white and a little ultramarine blue to cool it down because uh, it's picking up a reflected color from his shirt. So we've got to get these colors cooled down a little bit and that's why I'm adding uh, ultramarine blue. I'm going to scoop in a little more titanium white and raw umber dark just so I have enough color to go by here. And maybe just a pinch of alizarin crimson. It's a nice color that can shift it a little bit more to the violet spectrum. Okay, let's see if this color works. And we're again wanting to apply that below the chin area. We'll do the wide angle shots. So you can see that. I think this might work pretty well for what we're looking for. It's a nice cool brown. Um, and it's different than the, the background, the ground color of the canvas. So we'll just fill this in. Just block it in, and we're going to leave an opening then for his shirt with this color here. All right, and this goes all the way up around his jawline, so that's important to make sure we capture that. Uh, underside of the jaw is in shadow, um, and let's see, 
there's an area where these colors are going to kind of merge together and we're going to want to get a, a transitional kind of hue for that. Um, but this is the color we need for this area down there. All right, so now, now we need to blend out of that. I'm going to take this same brush and rinse it off quick. And then we want to uh, blend around this jawline area. So it looks like he doesn't have a beard. So let's take this color we've got and then let's mix it into our other skin tone that we know works. In fact, I'm just going to need to spray this palette really quick because I still am running my wood heat. It's, it's supposed to be spring. It's at the end of April, but we're still in winter temperatures. So I got my wood heat going and the paint's drying out very fast, which works really well for the glazing technique, but not as well for the alla prima technique. Um, but anyway, we're mixing these colors together. Maybe add just a little more warmth with some pyro orange. Okay, so now hopefully we'll have a good tone that we can blend out of. Uh, it's got to get a little darker. Okay, we're going to pull into this darker part of the mix. Again, warm it up with a little of that pyro red orange. Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, that could work pretty well, I think. Pretty well. Just kind of blend out of that. And now we're going to pull into this uh, lighter part of the mix right here. Go back in and just kind of smooth this out. Try to get a few different tones. Uh, put in a kind of a mid-tone on the side of his head right up here. Uh, we'll put in a little bit of a mid-tone over here as well. Yeah, just along the side of the face. There it is. And just kind of block that in. All the way to the top of the forehead. Maybe we'll just use this to round it out. There we go, that's good. All right, thank you, Lord, for that. Uh, and then we'll kind of block this shadow in here and here. Block in a couple of intermediary tones. Just try to keep everything as simple as we can. So we're going to go ahead and put in a shadow. Yeah, it's got to get a little darker. Let's, let's pull from this darker part of the mix where it has a bit more romber dark. And in fact, we'll add a little bit of burnt sienna to it as well. Yeah, that's good. And we'll go ahead and we'll just kind of block this in uh, under his lip and get that muscle platysmal banding in the area below that where it separates into the chin. Uh, we got that little area above the lip here, um, and now get a little gradation here for the beard area. Just kind of roll that all together. All right, and now we want to use our round brush, and we're going to get uh, the nasal labial fold in. So we take some pyro orange, maybe a bit of naphthol red, burnt sienna just a touch of alizarin crimson. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get the nasal labial fold kind of blocked in there. Just fill that area in. It's a warmer color. Uh, so we really want to make sure we have that warmer color. And uh, we don't want it to be too warm though. We might have to soften that up just a little bit. So I'll take my other, my other brush with a little bit of titanium white and raw sienna. And then with that, we'll just kind of uh, soften that up, give it a little bit of gradation there. Okay, we get a little blending in on this uh, shadow right there. There we go. Now let's get a little bit of shading here um, right or underneath the eyebrow area. Kind of fill in some of the gaps where the background color is showing through. Get in a bit of the vertical forehead furrows in there. Just a little bit of texture we want to put in. 
And then uh, let's get some of the lip color in. We'll take some titanium white, pyro orange, naphthal red. Just kind of mix that all together with a little more titanium white and naphthal red. This lip color is pretty strong. I will go ahead and just pop that in right there on his lips, just like that. With a little bit of uh, naphthal, actually alizarin crimson to darken it. And a little more naphthal red and raw umber dark to make kind of a darker version of that. Just a touch of burnt sienna because it looks like it has a little bit of a warmer tint. And we'll put that in uh, right above to get that thickness of the lip because that's important. There, and then underneath, just like that. There we go. All right, and now we'll want to uh, put in some darker values to suggest um, the eyes. Even though you don't really see his eyes much, we want to suggest them a little better than just that initial shadow. So let's go ahead and put those eyes in. We'll uh, take some raw umber dark, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson. Mix those together. Get a nice dark color for that. Maybe a little more raw umber dark. And a bit of burnt sienna just to make it cover better because burnt sienna is quite opaque. And we'll just go ahead and we'll just kind of block them in. Yeah, we need to we need to lighten it up a bit. I'll pull in some of this other color into it just to soften that up. Okay, and we'll block these guys in right there. Just try to get the shape in as roughly as we can. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to get the overall sense of his face here in a limited amount of time. Uh, we'll block in also some of these values for the mouth too. And then with that, get in the beard. Yeah, just kind of get that in. Just like that. Wipe off my brush. And uh, let's go ahead and mix some of that darker color into the lighter color up here. And then we're going to go ahead and put a crease in. Yeah, let's add just a bit of ultramarine blue to that. We'll add a little crease in around his neck area because he's got kind of a strong double chin thing going on. Okay, we got the opening on his shirt. We want to suggest that in. And that shadow uh, being cast from his nose is a little stronger right here too. So just want to suggest that. All right, there we go. Now let's go ahead and get a little bit of a shadow on his nose, just to show that ball of the nose and the form of the nose. So we're gonna use the lip color and bring it back into that mid-tone flesh color. And then we're gonna go ahead and just pop that in right on the bottom of the nose, just to show yeah, that it is three-dimensional and not paper thin. We'll try to get as much form as we can within this limited time frame. All right. Get a little more uh, shading under his eyes. That's good. And then we're going to get uh, a little bit of shading too uh, right along the bottom of his jaw. So I'm going to have to use this darker color right here and kind of blend it into the other. You can see I have a progression from dark to light. And then that's how we, uh, that's how we get some of these nuances accomplished. It's just a little bit of a darker color there. Then we go into a lighter part of the mix and just kind of blend that all together. And just use your finger, maybe dab it a little bit. All right. All right, now let's see if we can uh, pop in a highlight on his nose and the upper area of his uh, head. 
And I think that's going to that's gonna help quite a bit. So we'll rinse off the brush and we'll take some titanium white and some Indian yellow uh, and some pyrrole orange. Just kind of blend that all together. And generally with your highlights, you want to go a little bit warmer in tone, the lighter the highlights are. Just a good rule of thumb. Well, maybe add just a bit of burnt sienna to it. And a little bit of this uh, other color in the lip. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a shot and see how that looks. We're going to place that right on his nose. Yep, just as I thought, it's pretty strong. It stands out quite a bit. Um, and hopefully we can, we'll have time to put in a couple supporting gradients, but if not, we'll just have to make do. Um, I'll go ahead and pull in this lip color with that other color added in just to get a little bit of a supporting gradient around it. A little bit of a lighter pinkish tint because I do see that in the middle. Yeah, just a little bit of that. And we're just going to blend that in just to kind of suggest some of these vertical forehead furrows. And then we'll go ahead and put a little bit of this shading on the cheeks as well. Now, when you're doing a painting like this so quickly, you do have to adjust your expectations. You're not going to paint a Rembrandt in 30 minutes. This is more of a portrait study. Uh, you just can't get the nuances with uh, this kind of approach that you can get with uh, the glazing technique, for example. And certainly not without more time, time being the biggest factor. Uh, but it is a good way to push yourself, see what you can accomplish, get more efficient with every brush stroke, and uh, you know, just uh, have fun, see, see what you can do. And maybe you can turn the painting into something better. You know, maybe you can uh, add to it, you know, put in another half an hour, another hour, uh, you know, refine it more, or do another painting using the one you're working on as a study. All right, we're gonna add a little bit of some yellowish tones in here. Um, I really need them right here actually, right around the upper lip area. You gotta refine that, uh, refine the nasolabial fold just a bit. Alright, we'll put in a little bit of a highlight uh, on the upper part of the cheeks, so titanium white, a little bit of um, pyrrole orange and Indian yellow. Okay, we'll put in a bit of a highlight right there, just make that highlight stronger. Uh, a little stronger on the nose. We'll just pull this over to the other side, just darken it up a little bit with a little raw sienna. We'll kind of split the difference. Just want to get a little additional side shading on the nose here if I can because I think the whole thing needs to be a little bit brighter especially on that left side that get the uh, definition between the cast shadow a little stronger there I'll try to put in a couple of little highlights for his ears top and bottom inside canal uh, I'll take some burnt sienna Pyro orange, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put that in right there in the ear canal area, underside, okay, other side as well, but it can get a little darker, so we're just going to mix it in with this darker color here with a little naphthal red just to warm it up, and then we're going to go ahead and pop that in right there on that side, just like that. All right, and then let's add just a tiny bit more of the nasal labial fold color. Yeah, right here. A little bit of burnt sienna, naphthal red. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to just place that right inside the nasal labial folds. Okay. And now let's go ahead and paint his blue shirt in quick with the five minutes or so we have left. And we'll go ahead and we'll take 
this filbert brush just because it's the only clean brush I have not necessarily because it's the best um, titanium white ultramarine blue just a bit of phthalo blue maybe a little bit of raw umber dark just to neutralize the color so it's not uh, quite so intense and let's just kind of fill this in here I'll take the wide shot there we go and we'll just kind of fill that in and I think that'll help complete the painting it'll be a good contrast for his skin tones and we do have that strong cast shadow there I do want to leave some room for that uh, so for that we'll go ahead and we'll take some ultramarine blue and raw umber dark a bit of alizarin crimson a little more ultramarine blue just to make that color more robust all right and we'll bring some matte medium into it to make it more fluid and we'll go ahead and we'll just uh, pop that in right under the neck because we have that strong cast shadow being cast from the direct sunlight and we want to uh, show that here in the painting got a little bit of the shadow on his uh, ear too being cast on his shirt and let's see it probably comes out yeah a little bit further actually so let's get that all the way over there there it is and then a little bit of the highlight color we'll go back to that just pull it really quick off the palette and we'll go ahead and pop that in here right on the bottom just like that all right so take the remaining time to do a few more nuances using the small round brush and I'm just going to hit maybe the bottom of the ear really quick pull this uh, brownish color I've got in the middle and uh, we'll just kind of pop in a couple of darker tones there for the ear canal a little shadow under the ear um, side of the head strengthen that a little bit maybe get a little bit of a highlight on his lip if we can Titanium white, bit of pyro orange. Let's see what we can do. Pop it in right there on the lip. Do a couple of vertical strokes. Show the texture. Do have a little bit of a highlight too on the top part of the upper lip showing as well. Uh, so we want to get that in there too. Do I have time to get a stronger highlight on the forehead? Let's see, we'll take some titanium white. Bit of Indian yellow. And uh, let's see if we've got a little time here. So I, th I hear that thing ticking. We only have maybe a minute or two left. Just pop that in there, a little bit above. Get a little bit on the nose, strengthen that. A couple little textural areas on the cheek. Maybe a little bit here on upper part of the, uh, above his mouth, below the nose area. Yeah, that's good. Um, okay, that's it. So here's where we're at. This is where we're at. Yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with this for for a 30 minute portrait. You know, and I actually am a little rusty. I haven't been doing these for a while, um, and I want to get back into it. And uh, I just, I really want to make a daily habit of this as much as possible. So I've stopped and started so many times but I'm just gonna keep at it and I'm hoping it'll it'll click um, but anyway this is what we have and I, I really think it turned out nicely you know we've got a good sense of the uh, value structure and the form and even the likeness to some degree I mean it's not perfect you know his eyes are maybe a little too far apart and um, you know some of the forehead furrows a little bit overdone but uh, I think overall for you know 30 minutes uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it um, you know I could have darkened this edge here of his neck giving that a little more definition you know and just really getting his neck more nicely defined there and even the bottom part of his beard and some different things but 
but overall I like how this one turned out. And so uh, anyway, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this as well. And if you would like to um, try your own 30 minute acrylic portrait, go ahead, let me know in the comments. I'd love to uh, cheer you on and maybe you can get in touch with me via email. Send me what you've done. I'd love to see that too. Don't forget also to check out my website, realisticacrylic.com. And there I have several tips, tutorials, classes you can take to improve in your portrait painting. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this. God bless. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.